In my previous video, I gave nine reasons why I believe the Ocean Gate Titan transcript is not fake. I purposely left this one out because I had trouble making sense of it, but the crackling sounds at aft sections never made that much sense to me. The crackling part makes sense, but the stop-and-go nature of it didn't. Having learned more about the characteristics of the carbon fiber cylinder, which comprised the hole in the version of the sub that imploded on June 18th, 2023, I had a revelation as to why it may have happened this way. I will offer my explanation. In my carbon fiber cylinders video, we learned that there were actually two different holes that were used. One was made in 2017, and it was deemed unusable, so it was scrapped. This was long before any dives were made with any paying clients. A new hole was made in 2020, and that is the one which was in Titan when the tragedy occurred. The first successful dive to, to the Titanic was made in 2021. In 13 dives to the Titanic, this hole performed exactly as predicted. This hole was apparently made in one inch increments being cured between layers. The hole was five inches thick. In this picture, you can see where the five layers occur. Let's go to the day of the dive. The dive starts at 8.04 a.m. All is going well. The ominous signs begin at 9.28 a.m. when they are at approximately 3,400 meters. They note an alarm from the RTM. A decision was made to abort the dive. At 9.35 a.m., they are finally in a position to start ascending. A couple of minutes later, at 9.38, Titan sends a message that they're hearing a crackling sounded aft. This aligns with my belief that the carbon fiber cylinder failed by kink band formation, which can suddenly and unpredictably appear when carbon fiber is subjected to compression. The real-time monitoring system is normally monitoring sounds out of the range of human hearing, listening for ultrasonic pulses. If they could actually hear the hole crackling with their ears, this is very bad because the hole is beginning to fail catastrophically. Four minutes later at 9.42, Titan says they're trying to run diagnostics. They're ascending now, but very slowly. Sounds have subsided. Global RTM alert active all red. This is the part that has always puzzled me. Why would the crackling noise subside? At the same time, the RTM system is going bonkers too. It would appear that every sensor was detecting activity. If the hole is not quiet and being very busy, this is not a good sign. At this point, Rush would have known that their chances of survival were slim, and they had to get to the surface immediately. The hole may not have imploded at this point due to the assumed safety factor of 2.25. Four and a half minutes later, at 9.46, Titan says they're reading red on the A power bus. They switch to the B power bus. They're at 34 or 57 meters, and they're hearing more sounds at aft. So at this point, it appears that they completely drain the A battery with, with probably nearly 10 minutes of continuous full power to the upwards thrusters. That would have been 40 amps of current. As battery power was a limited resource, this seems to be the actions of someone in a panic mode. They needed to get to the surface ASAP. Hearing more sounds at aft is really not a good sign. Rush must have known that the hole was literally going to fail any second. All communication with Titan was lost after this last transmission. I can only imagine what may have transpired inside of Titan during those last moments. Was anyone else really aware of what was actually happening? Okay, so what am I getting at? Since the hole was built with essentially five one-inch thick layers, I believe that one of these layers started failing, probably in one of the inner layers. This layer started to buckle or crumple, if you will. This made one area of the hole weak, and a cascading effect began to occur, but it stopped for a few minutes, at least audibly. The real-time monitoring system, however, would have still been detecting plenty of activity. It did not fail immediately due to the layering of the carbon fiber. For whatever reason, they could not begin a rapid enough ascent to where the pressure on the hole was significantly lower. The relentless hydrostatic pressure caused another adjacent layer in the weakened area to start failing as well a few minutes later, accelerating the cascading failures, after which the catastrophic failure occurred. This would seem to explain why the crackling sounds started, then subsided, then started acting up again. 
we can see that they had a window of 10 to 15 minutes to potentially avoid disaster, but that was negated by their troubles dropping the frame and failing to ascend as quickly as needed. Another thing that aligns with the transcript is Stockton Rush's reference to the sounds made by the Scrap 2017 hull. He said it crackled and popped and that it wasn't getting quieter on successive dives. A thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling, and the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of, and this hull wasn't doing it, so we scrapped it. So, therefore, it could not be trusted and had to be scrapped. It is curious that the transcript uses the term crackling. Would a faker use this term? Why wouldn't they use crunching or some other term like noises? How would they even know what carbon fiber sounds like when it fails? In any case, what do you think? Do you think my theory sounds reasonable? It makes a lot of sense to me. Once again, I'm not trying to prove that the transcript is fake or that it is not fake. It's just that in all my hours of researching how the Titan was constructed, how it was operated, the terminology that was used in association with it, there's just too many things in the transcript that line up with the actual sub for me to believe that it's a, a faked document. Um, the faker would have had to get so many of these little details exactly right, which, which the transcript does. So if it is a fake, I have to tip my hat to the faker because it's really damn good.